it's really it's rewarded me mm-hmm. it's given me something to put my time my effort it's been a passion it makes me feel good about myself to be able to deliver a vehicle to a customer and just blow their mind and see the response i get and they and the way they just are so thankful and it actually feels like it's a service that impacts them and sometimes that shocks me because i just feel like i'm putting it in the car Hey, what's going on? My name is Dustin. I'm the host of the Detail Spot podcast. This episode we have on Joe Woolard with Duck Detail. Uh, me and Joe just kind of vibe out in this episode. We talk about you know his business, things that has worked with his business, things that he thinks is like key areas to focus on when it comes to growing a successful detailing business that that includes relationship building communication Um, we talk about social media and and all the hats that we have to wear as business owners we get into all of that we also touch on you know the mental health side of being a detailer it's a lonely trade it's a you know oftentimes we're always working by ourselves we're always having to run our business by ourselves and you know don't really have anywhere to turn to when it comes to reaching out to people. And we talk all about that, some things that are probably really relatable um, with you and your detailing business maybe. So stay tuned for that. And we're gonna go ahead and dive into it and I'll bring on Joe and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So let's go ahead and get it. Sure. So tell us a little tell us a little bit about you, your business, um, kind of how you started in this industry. Um, well, for me, it's kind of started, it kind of started in Colorado. I didn't in Oregon necessarily with all of this. I didn't even know I was going to be doing this. I didn't plan to be a business owner or go this route whatsoever. It was, I made a lot of bad, poor decisions, mostly in life leading up to this point. You know, I'm 35 now. I kind of, I'd already screwed up my credit and kind of all that kind of stuff. So I was just working dead end jobs and we had just moved to Colorado and I was of all things learning about door dashing. I thought door dashing was the answer for me. So I was researching how to effectively door dash before I got into it. And through that, I ac- accidentally figured out um, that auto detailing was a thing, like mobily, because it never really clicked for me. And I came across a guy named Wilson's Auto Detail, of all people. I came across his stuff and I was like, oh, you can make money? And <laughs> go, let me show up to your house and do this? I was like, <clears throat> okay because I was I was hungry and trying to hustle because I wanted to do something better because I didn't really get myself anywhere you know college all that kind of stuff so I needed to find a way to generate some money and I wanted to provide better stuff for you know my family at the time so I had started to learn more about it and then I decided to um, try and do it I had been doing in-home health care and one of the ladies that I would go in and um, help and stuff she was always encouraging me to be have like an entrepreneurial mindset and stuff. And it just she kept pushing at that. Like Joe, she's like, you know, you could go do this or you could do that. You could go work with old people like me and teach them how to use their technology and stuff. And they'll pay you for it. And I actually got a couple jobs from her recommendation of doing that. I went and was teaching a lady how to use a, a MacBook and how to set up her printer. It was wild to me that people were giving me money to come to their house and do these little things for them. And that just kind of, I guess that just kind of kept feeding that fire in me and kept just kind of going, oh, there's there's a way to make money unconventional from what I kind of thought it would always be like. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so what I did was I decided to kind of go for it. And she's like, you know what? You do my car. I'm like, all right. She's like, I'll tell you what, I'll buy this equipment. You clean the car. We call it good. So it's like, I got, there's my steamer right there, you know? So I got a, a, a McCulloch steamer just for taking care of her interior, which, I mean, she probably shouldn't even given me $50 to touch her car, but well, she <laughs> did, you know? So it just kind of worked out and I kept figuring it out and I was researching and learning as much as I could online, you know, from other professionals, people doing this and trying to get as much as I could out of it. And it was going well for me. I started to do a few vehicles here and there. And then um, we, um, kids suddenly passed away unexpectedly. So we had just moved to Colorado at that time. It had been like, we were there maybe eight months. So decided that needed to definitely change life because that was big portion of the reason why Colorado even happened. So I randomly looked at the map and it was Washington and Oregon. I was like, it has to be pretty, but it cannot be here anymore. Mm -hmm. So randomly picked Eugene, Oregon, landed here. 
And guess what I did? I started door dashing. My, my dumb butt was like, oh, I'm going to go door dash. I got a taste of it, but no, no, I'm going to go do this door dash thing. But that's what I did. And then I was doing it for like a month and the light bulb went off. And I was like, what is wrong with you, man? You put in some time, you got some skills, you, you kind of were figuring it out, learning what to do. You know, the skeleton framework's there. You know the, some of the processes. You know what, you know, you know the vacuum to buy. You know what you need to get for the basics to do a car. You can do this. So I bought the bare minimum things I needed. And I was smart enough that when I had done those vehicles back in Colorado, I took photos of it. So I had those photos and <clears throat> I had a couple of reviews actually, because I set up my own little Facebook page called Dr. Detail at the time. And I was really trying to just like, I was just getting it off the ground when everything kind of changed for us. And so I was doing the DoorDash thing and the light bulb went off. So I got the bare minimum items I needed and I started off and I made a post on Facebook. I got into a bunch of the local garage sale, the buy, sell, trade groups, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I went in there and I just tried to make a post as me. I didn't try and be gimmicky. I didn't try and sell anybody on anything. I just went, hey, I just moved here. I'm from Colorado. I know what I'm doing. Please let me clean your car. Here's photos of my work. I can provide character references as well. Reach out. I'll come to you. And I got blasted. Like, I got blasted in a way that still actually doesn't make sense. Like, I can't get, I don't know how that happened. It was like lightning or something, because I've gotten, like, crazy responses and, you know, big kicks off of videos or things I've done, but nothing ever like that one organic post I made. Mm -hmm. I just threw it out there, and the response was so crazy. I was like, I got to come up with a page. What do I do? Holy crap. I need a name. This is too many. I had too many people coming in my inbox. It was wild. So I was like, hmm, how can I get support and do nothing for it? What's the laziest way I, thing I can do? How can I just try and get people behind me, you know, as a community? Because I really felt like that was the kind of vibe around here. Is everyone really support, wanted to support small businesses. They're really about people around here. Not so much, you know, a business name. But so I was like, what can I do to incorporate that? So the university thought about the docs, you know, a lot of detailing. Doc, it just... It just flew at work. So I threw up the Facebook page and it went insane. I mean, it just went wild. And I've just been trying to, I've just been stoking the fire ever since, studying, learning, and to do everything I can, reaching out to people who know way more than me and stuff like that. Um, I actually kind of met, got a buddy mentor situation that started with a guy over in North Carolina. I don't remember what I was doing. I was just posting one of the detail, something in the detailing for money group. And we started, get to talking and he was just like hey I just started like it was like just here's what here's what you need to do do this do this do this I will literally hold your hand and show you what to do and literally basically covered my ass until I got to a point where I could kind of you know hold the steering wheel myself and get going you know and yeah. figure it out and that was even and that was just a godsend for me and I just keep doing my research I've just been plugging away at it all you know met some people like Ivan LaCroix and stuff, talked to them. They've just been invaluable, willing to help, give knowledge, you know. It's, I can't complain. It's been a crazy journey getting involved into the detailing world. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And it looks like, like, you know, you, you, how, how long has, like, um, has Doug Detail been a thing? Uh, it's now for two years almost. Two It'll years. be two years, February 7th. That's awesome. And you already kind of have like a good idea. Like you, you're branded, you're wearing your hat, you're, you're wearing a jacket with oh, your logo like, yeah. on it. Like, you know, that's something that like, you know, makes a difference, like on whether you get business or whether another company is going to get business. And it's cool. Also, like what you were saying, that post that blew up, I think a lot of detailers think that like, they have to create like a, a really, um, generic post when it comes to like like something on facebook or these groups like they think that mm -hmm. it has to look like everybody else because everybody else is doing it so they just assume that that works but like a transparent post like really just saying who you are where you're at right now where your business is at i think people eat that up more than they do like something that looks you know just like a business like you 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 kind of put yourself out there as like hey i'm the person behind the business you know and i do need support because i'm a brand new company and i think that's probably why it blew up 
Yeah, it did a lot for me in that area as well. And when that happened, I mean, the biggest thing I kind of felt like I did that helped me the most is I went, oh, crap, this is real. And I tried to treat it like college. So when I was not in front of the car, I'm literally in front of my phone. I am ta- literally asking questions to people who've been doing this longer than I've been alive. I'm watching videos on the processes, the chemicals, what's in the chemicals. Why am I using this chemical? What time should I use this chemical? I mean, just all that kind of stuff, just the nittiest, grittiest details so that I can know what to do and not only know how to do it, but then explain it to the customer Mm -hmm. and inform them on what's going on with their vehicle and why I'm doing what I'm doing. So they realize that I'm not just this random guy on Facebook showing up to your house with a bucket and pail trying to clean and, you know, end up scratching the crap out of your car in the process or damage something, you know, just spraying a bunch of APC all over something or whatever else is the case. Mm-hmm. And just they really, really like that because that's what I noticed. It felt more like the Wild West around here. It just seemed like a bunch of people posting in these groups, kind of like what I was doing to a point and just showing up to but showing up to people's houses and you don't know who you're going to get or what you can get. And in my case, it worked out well because I really took it that serious from the beginning because I realized my name is going to matter. These things are going to matter. I got to be professional. But I also realized that I, they want to see a person as well. So I'm just going to be me. I want to pause really quick and tell you about the detail community. We're talking about all these resources, things you need to learn, um, things you need to implement in your detailing business to have su- success. What if there was a place that you could go and it just had a library full of all of those resources, teaching you how to market correctly, how to sell to clients, how to build relationships with clients, all of the hidden tools and hidden strategies in order that you can put in your business for it to succeed. You do have a spot. It's called the detail community and it is proven to work. There are so many detailers inside that are implementing what they've learned from the detail community and implementing it into their business and seeing crazy success. I won't go through and bore you. I'll get right back to the episode really quick, but you can read all of those reviews on what these members are saying and how it's helping them. Um, You can go to thedetailcommunity.com forward slash join, or you can click the link in the description. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you can click the link in the show notes as well and read all about it, see what other members are doing inside. Um, And I'll give you a quick rundown of what you get when you join today. You get access to exclusive podcast episodes that are only available to Detail Community members. You get exclusive access to over 50 plus business classes that you can learn how to level up your business and make more money in your detailing business. You get access to pre-made promotional templates so you don't have to you know pay a graphic designer or learn all of these fancy softwares to create these promotional templates you know to separate your brand from your competitors these are pre-made for you and all you have to do is quickly go in grab a template pack and then upload it to your social media so you're going to stand out above the rest with these these are added regularly these template packs are added on a monthly basis so you always have something to post to your social media and something to advertise you also get access to a community forums area to where you can hang out with other members inside and get support every step of the way. We also do live events every month to where you can come hang out with other members, ask your toughest question and get an in-depth answer. We also go in-depth with slideshows showing you things that you need to have going on in your business that you probably don't know about already. So come join today. So for $37 a month, meaning for less than what it would cost you for you know two bottles of all-purpose cleaner or less than what it costs you for a bottle of ceramic coating, you know, It is going to show you how to make way more money. The best way to look at it is if you only get one client, you're going to get so many more. I know that you're going to get the information in here is going to resonate with you so much that you're going to get more than just one client. But even if only you get one client, that means your membership is paid for for a long time. So it's really a no brainer. It's at a price point to where you can afford it to where you're going to make money from it. And I can't wait to see you inside. So make sure to check that out. The detail community.com forward slash join. If you're watching on YouTube, the link is in the description. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, the link is in the show notes. I can't wait to connect with you more in there and I cannot wait to watch your business level up and I can't wait to watch your business perform in the way that you really want it to. What I got from it was like, you know, you wanted to put yourself out there as like the person behind the business, but like if a customer were to ask you a question about something simple of like, why do you do it this way? Or how are you going to, you know, clean my vehicle? 
cycle, like you're going to have the answer and you're going to come off in a professional way and say like, Hey, this is the steps I'm going to do to it. These are the chemicals I'm going to use and why I'm going to use those. Cause you put in that research and like customers eat that up. Like whenever you know what you're talking about, especially like in a higher end world, like if they really cherish their mm -hmm. vehicle, like you telling them step by step why you're not doing it the cheap and you know cutting corners route like you're going with it like i'm doing these extra steps i may charge more but like they eat that up that you explain your process and you sound professional and like and that you can do that when they ask the question you can do that in facebook posts you can do that on your website like a customer truly knows like the person who knows what they're talking about and a detailer who's more of like just a car washer, like they can look at like the way they're describing things and say, the way he's describing it, I could probably do myself, you know, like they want to use you. Exactly. Because, you know, like a professional. Yeah. yeah Cause when I, when I go through, I'll explain a little bit of the processes, even when I'm like talking to him on the phone or something, I'm like, we're going to go through, we're going to blow out your carpet beam. We're going to open up all the carpet fibers. Cause you know, the carpet's designed in, in automotive vehicles to, you know, trap in and lock in the dirt and these things like that. And we've got to actually open that up to pull those things out to get the carpeting even to a point to where we can even consider introducing any type of, you know, water, liquids or anything else to it to try and do any further cleaning because we're just going to create mud. And then they're like, oh, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Wow. You really know what you're talking about. And that's like, and that's just like, that's basics. I mean, that's just, yeah. we're, we're just talking about vacuuming their carpet, right? We haven't <laughs> talked about anything to do with pH or anything else, or, I mean, and that, just that little bit alone will blow their mind. Mm -hmm. And it really surprises people that you even take that much interest into the actual processes and what you're doing. And that then surprises me because I'm like, I'm trying to run a business. I want to be successful. I shouldn't know any and everything about absolutely everything I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I should try and figure it out. I should know what I'm doing and be able to explain this to the customer and present it to them. And if I don't, then why am I in business? Yeah, exactly. And I think like the detailing, and you probably have experienced this as well, being in business two years by now, like detailing is like the the most smallest percentage of what it really takes being the business owner. Like that communication yeah, I think is, is yeah. the biggest part. Yeah, that's the biggest thing I've learned that I keep saying. I even tell my customers sometimes. I'm like, look, this detailing part of it, it's like this part. It's like I realize this is this is stuff you can learn. And to a certain extent, I mean, oh, anyone can do it. Yeah, it gets to a point where there's almost an art to it when you get into paint correction. Some of the things some people can do is like mm -hmm. it's insane. But to do the basics you need to detail a car to what most people need, desire, or even want half the time. I mean, it's very basic skills, mm -hmm. but to actually have longevity and survive, you got to know how to be a business owner and entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's the, oh, excuse me, that's the biggest thing that I picked up and learned was not being a detailer, being an entrepreneur, not being a detail business owner, but being an entrepreneur, the way I'm treating it, the way I'm looking at the money I'm making and how I'm approaching this as a business. How do I deal with my marketing, my advertising, just all these kind of things. All that is so important. Running your Instagram, actually paying attention to those things, investing into your Google My Business, making sure you're posting on there at least once a day. I go on there, I'm posting a video, I'm putting an update, I'm putting a photo up there multiple times a day and Google eats that stuff up. Mm -hmm. You know, responding to the reviews. It's just, there's so much that goes involved into running a business like this. It's insane. And once you start learning it, it's just, as you're going, you just keep realizing how many doors you got open that you didn't realize were just hanging open on your car. And you're like, I got to close that one. I got to close that one. And then you look around, it's like, how did that one get opened up? Yeah. It, just, it seems like it's a never ending struggle of just kind of plugging the holes and finding the weaknesses in your business and the way you're doing things. And I feel like if you don't run your business like that, you fail. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm just overly neurotic and obsessive, but I just <laughs> feel like I was given a gift and it's like, I'm going to do everything I can to make something of it because for me it's it's literally saved my life to a point it's mm -hmm. it's it's kind of not to be dark but i mean i try to just kind of graze over it because it's awkward to talk about and stuff but mm -hmm. i mean losing my kid was the worst it's the worst thing that's ever happened to me mm -hmm. and it's interesting how this all worked out with detailing and the timing because it, it i threw my completely into it and it's really it's rewarded me 
Mm-hmm. It's given me something to put my time, my effort. It's been a passion. It makes me feel good about myself to be able to deliver a vehicle to a customer and just blow their mind and see the response I get and the, and the way they just are so thankful. And it actually feels like it's a service that impacts them. And sometimes that shocks me because I just feel like I'm cleaning a car. And for them, sometimes it's like, I just took care of, you know, I took care of their kid or something or, or, you know, their dog or whatever else. It's like their precious baby. It's crazy the way people do look at it. Like, you know, detailing is, I mean, in a way it is just a very higher end version of cleaning a car. Like, you know, but it's, yeah. it's wild at the service that like, cause it's not a necessity. It's not like, you know, groceries, like this is something that people are literally willing to pay just because they have the extra money and they truly enjoy getting in their vehicle and it being clean or knowing that their car is parked in the garage and a professional touched it like it, that it saw professional eyes that they don't have to worry, you know? So it's like that luxury of it. And the fact that you can provide that to them and like the joy that they get from it when they get into their car, it is super satisfying. I think that like that feeling is what probably all detailing business owners should feel like in some way or another, but what you were saying about like the having all these doors open and like, you you know, it's not just you being obsessive. That that is what it takes. And I think like those doors when it comes to like Instagram, Facebook, and like being consistent on every platform and all these things that we have to do, like those doors being open or like those different outlets of uh, reach, I guess you could say, are like things that every honestly in this like the era that we live in like in 2022 with all these platforms being there like if you're not on there your competitor will be and so it's kind of like if you're and those are those are outlets of way to reach people like in the 1950s like people had to go door to door like that was pretty much the only way to get your name out there so it is super cool that we have that to us now like these are all just different streams of ways to get customers, but it's, it takes that consistency and it can be super discouraging. Like I felt it too. Like when you put in this work and you're just constantly posting because you know, consistency, they reward you. Their algorithm is Mm -hmm. meant to reward you with reach for being consistent. But you know, it's kind of discouraging too, because like you post all the time and like, I know you've probably felt it. I've personally felt it. And it's like, where is, where are the customers going to come from? Like sometimes you may get them and then you may go a month with not getting something from that one platform. But the, I think the key thing to remember is like, stay consistent, but just know that it's reminding the customer when they do need it. So they could scroll past your stuff 50 times, but on that 51st time they look at their car and they're like, Oh man, it is dirty. I do need to call this person. So that's well, kind yeah, of, absolutely. you know, yeah. and like follow up and things like that are so huge for me. It's like, just running a business the way I've treated it is I is I'm really big into stuff like love like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu doing that kind of stuff, and I just kind of treat it a little bit like martial arts in the sense of I just care about what's effective and what works, mm-hmm. and I don't have an ego about it. And if this over here works, I'm gonna pull from that. I'm gonna use a little bit of that. If this is successful, I'm gonna use some of that. If marketing like that works, or, or you know presenting my my video in this way does this thing, I'll do it. It does not matter what it is to me and principles other people are using. Like one thing I like when it comes to like follow up is every so often, if I haven't seen somebody and I don't know, I usually do it about about three months or so, six months, I'll throw something in a text and I'll do a mass follow up and it'll be something like, hey, this is Joe with Duck Detail reaching out. Um, you know, it's been a little while since I've seen you in your vehicle. And because you're one of my VIP customers, someone who's very important to me, I'd like to offer you this, this exclusive, um, uh, how do I usually put it? This exclusive VIP package, um, if booked by Friday, you know, I will also throw in a headlight restoration Mm -hmm. or something that really quick that I don't need to put a lot of effort into. A lot of times I'll get a lot of follow up out of that. I'll I'll throw those out and there's a there's a week right there just of, of reoccurring customers. People are like, oh, yeah, I meant to reach out to you. I'll get a lot of that, too. Or I forgot I've been meaning to, you know, I get a lot of those. It's like, hey, that's what I'm here for. It's my job to let you know, to remind you, this is a real service. I'm not just this guy who showed up, took your money, and poof, I'm gone. (laughs) Yeah. No, like, follow-ups are probably my biggest thing. Like, when it comes to, you really only, I think most people think that you have to have four weeks of the month 
of new clients. Like you have to constantly be somewhere, whether it be Google or social media, you got to be high ranked on those to get all these new clients that you've never detailed before. But like, I personally think that once you you're in business a while, because it, you're not going to be in business one month or you, really in the first year, you're really just not going to encounter enough people to have like a big follow-up list. But after like, once you get to year two, your contact list is big enough to where like, you really only need two weeks out of that month of getting new clients. The other two weeks will probably be filled with you following up with clients and say, Hey, you're due for a detail. You can automate that as well to where it's like, you know, every three months it, it contacts them and says, Hey, you know, like what you just said, you're very important to us. And you know, you're due for another detail and probably a way better way of saying it than that. But you know, you, you kind of get what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. really once you're kind of like your able is really good you know things like that that's the other thing is, is i'm huge i'm so big on on, on fans booking applications and you're a oh my god i can just <laughs> go on forever about your able it's stupid because I, I i started off and i tried your able i had it on my phone less than a week i'm like <laughs> get this off of here <laughs> and i have so much regret for doing that i didn't i didn't realize what i had i didn't realize how all the tools that were there, I didn't because I didn't have that business owner mindset yet. I still it was just seeing through a little pinhole, mm -hmm. and then it, once I was able to get it and I started to incorporate it, it has been such a game changer. And yeah. like those follow ups and stuff, those things you can automate, the things that you can stop thinking about, mm -hmm. it's so amazing. It helps you run your business. It's like a little assistant. It's great. Mm -hmm. And it makes you look more professional. It makes you stand out so much when they see those uh, requests come through. You know, if I'm staying in there, a customer talks to me, I can have my phone out. I can literally go run through it with them right on the spot. I can get a proposal set up, get their information, pull it all right there. I don't need to just hand them my business card and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. I can do all that on the spot and literally shoot that proposal over to them with the various options that they can then take a look at, see what they want, select what they want, approve it kick it back over to me and then we're in the next step i can take my deposit or whatever i want to do next and mm -hmm. move the process along and yeah. it just makes you stand out so much more when you have things like that in place mm -hmm. yeah and two things that i really like about it like I i'm a huge fan of your able as well and i was like you as well that first week that first month it was hard because i was going from something like square which nothing wrong with square it's a great like free alternative yeah. but like the amount of features going into like an app like that was, was so overwhelming. But like, once you really look into it and like commit the time to like, you see how easy it is and like what it really does for your business. Like, for example, um, you know, year one, when I started, like it was, I think I hoped the client would just save my number. Like, okay, they called me, they needed <laughs> me, you know, and I just hope that yeah. they remember me. Yeah. And it's like, but what happened probably Actually, not probably. I know what happened was, oh, this guy did great, but I can't remember who he was. Okay. They're going mm. online and they're searching for somebody else. And now they've used somebody else. The cool part about having something like that. And, you know, obviously there's other ways, like you could leave some type of brand and material, but like that costs money and that costs, you it know, does. business cards is a good thing. I like to slip them in yep. manuals and things like that. Also in vehicles, that vehicle gets sold, something like that. They go through that service manual. Oh, this might've been the last person to touch. I might call them, you know, exactly. all that kind of stuff. There's so much. And those service reminders though, it's like, Hey, you know, you, like the way it's set up is like you have like, let's say you do like a level one detail and it's like three months from now they get a reminder and then six months from then they get another reminder. Like they don't ever forget you because they're getting a text message that's automated. So something like that is another employee. So like, you know, that was super cool. But the number two thing that like I found out and I'd actually just experienced this because like the more people that you encounter, like you're going to have ones that just either one aren't happy or for two, um, don't respect like your process, I guess you could say. So like our process is every client, regardless of what package they buy, we require a deposit like 20%. And that just, that ensures us that like, you, for one, I have a guy that like, if he goes out to that job and then he's that job cancels last minute, what like he's just not supposed to get paid. Like if he's on commission, you know? So it's like that deposit yeah. at least covers his pay. So, and the clients sometimes don't, understand that common sense i guess so uh, we had a guy cancel and within our security the deposit text because it like sends it out to them we have a copy and paste that i put in that little block and it says you know hey this is mandatory 20 percent goes towards your invoice total 
And, um, but it makes it to where, you know, I can't remember exactly, but it's like pretty much if you cancel within 48 hours, we keep that deposit. So it's like automated. Hey, you signed it. You, you paid it. That's, you cool. know, um, you agreed to it. So after he canceled and we keep the deposit and, you know, the client's going on a big spiel about how, you know, we took his money and, you know, he canceled, but it's like, Hey, we're pretty, we're pretty automated and we're pretty systematic now with that software. So it's like, you can't really mess up and you can't blame us because you see everything that's sent out. It's, it's, you know, it's so systematic that you can't really blame the owner now. Yeah. Deposits is a really big thing. It's, one of the things that I learned really quickly early on, because I actually started off after that whole thing with you able for me, I then grabbed house call pro. It seemed it was not nearly as catered towards automotive detailing, which is where I ended up having that growth issue where I just, it, I felt the constraints of the, of, of what it offered me at that point, because it wasn't targeted towards what I specifically am doing. Mm -hmm. So once I finally transitioned away from that and went to that and went over from there, it's been a big help, but deposits have been so huge throughout the whole process, even with House Call Pro, because I knew it was necessary. It commands a level of respect. It shows some professionalism, you know, and it protects that time. And the time is so important. And that's usually what I explain to them as well. I'm like, hey, I require a $75. And that's what I do is I have a, it's a flat fee unless we move up and we're doing corrections and coatings and then my deposit will go up. But I do a, st a standard just $75 deposit. It does not matter what your service is. It's $75 because you are taking my time away for the day. If you cancel on me, well, I then need to fill that time. Mm -hmm. And if I can't fill that time, I still should be paid for that time as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And I've never really had any issues when it comes to deposits of people. Mm -hmm. I don't really get a lot of pushback or kickback. Usually that explanation is more than enough. And I usually get a, that makes sense. And everyone is happy to pay their deposit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. I mean, most of the time, most clients, I would probably say 98% of them just know it's common sense. Hey, like yeah. if you're, you I have to have something as leverage to make sure that you hold in your end of the end of the end of the bargain as a client is very minimal. You know, it's, it's, it's mm. show up for your appointment or don't cancel last minute, you know? So like, that's all you have to do as the client it, me, I'm holding everything. You know, I have, I have, I'm taking the biggest risk, you know? Yeah. Um, so for you to cancel last minute, that's just common sense that, Hey, you do have to get paid for your time. That's, that's just me. You got some, uh, what's the term? Like, you got some um, skin in the game, you know, and it holds yeah, them. To, you an know, investment, so. man. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's so important and it does a lot. It, it really does. And I think every, every to, to have success in this industry, you have to run your business like a business. It, and it can't be willy nilly. It can't be. And I personally was at fault for that as well. Like in the beginning, I didn't take deposits for that first year. And, and sure enough, got a ton of cancellations. I was sitting there twiddling my thumbs on days that I should be working. Um, but that deposit that you start treating your business like a business and you'll see so much like, um, so much more traction, I guess you could say. Yeah. And even when you have that situation, you do get that reschedule or something. Once you're taking a deposit for me, it feels more like a school day situation. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's not an, Oh crap. For me, it's like, Oh, well, that's time I can invest on the back end of my business on all the things that are that are that are neglected at the moment that I'm always needing to do. Exactly. It's like I can always take that time and I got a million and one other things I could be doing right now. So yeah. I'm more than happy to do that because at the end of the day, that's just going to really put me further along than I would have if I just went out and cleaned that car that day. Mm -hmm. That's just more labor again, something I know how to do. I mean, it's a little bit of money, but everything else I'm doing on the back end is going to just, I'm just going to get so much more out of that in the long game for it. Mm -hmm. And that's what's good. My business and everything else, which I just, I can't harp on that enough. It's, mm -hmm. it's there's so much value in that and people just ignore it. And it's exciting too, like to know, like, I think you probably think like me as well to where, you have this goal of like where you want your business to be and you have all these stepping stones of what it takes to get there. Let's say 
your website or let's say SEO work, or let's say like networking or branding, you know, all these little things that like add up over time and then it will get you to that goal. But it's like stepping stones to get there. I think a lot of people don't realize those stepping stones. They think just like, I'm going to start and I'm going to get here in three years without putting in those, those work on those areas. But like me, I think it's exciting that like, Hey, if I take the time, let's say it's a rainy day in your mobile. Like if I took the time and dedicated this for half the day learning it and then the other half implementing it that's exciting to me to know that in three six months from now that's going to pay dividends like that's gonna i'm gonna start seeing results from me doing that exactly you know it's kind of it's it's exciting to see everything come together the journey of like doing all this is is the most gratifying thing like obviously winning the lottery and being a millionaire that would be pretty cool and it wouldn't have any type of journey with it um would I still take that? Absolutely. Who wouldn't? But like what kind of builds you up and builds you as a, a stronger person even is doing those steps and going through that journey. So like, it's cool to see that you knowing I've got to put in that time to learn this. I've got to put in that time to implement it, but it's cool to know that that is going to pay off because you put in that work on those days off, you know, just cause it's a rainy day. doesn't mean that it's, Hey, it's watch TV day. It's you're going to put in the time on, things that you know your business actually needs yeah i mean it's crucial to be doing that kind of stuff and it's so helpful and then the time you can take to network or anything else you can do i mean there's so much you could be doing with that time or you know a few quick messages like oh these few guys i should probably say hey to it's been a little while you know mm -hmm. you have no idea why might what might come from those conversations and stuff and it's just yeah. it's it's important the community and stuff is crazy like the detail community is it's something else in general like it's it's a blessing and if people would try and get involved with more more other detailers and just you know, crawl out of their little their little hole i mean mm -hmm. it would really help a lot of people out mm -hmm. it's and it, it's really encouraging because this does feel pretty lonely sometimes it's a very solo-esque kind of thing it feels like especially being a mobile guy yeah no 100 percent. this industry is like it, it can wear on your brain sometimes like you're sitting there polishing a car for you know or washing a car polishing like cleaning interiors for eight hours of the day by yourself and most people are by themselves like you know whether you either either have employees or not you probably split them up and you you're working by yourself almost every single day it can kind of be like taxing on your brain sometimes yeah so it's nice to kind of take a little bit of that and reach out to maybe some other people that are doing something that you're doing as well and kind of get mm -hmm. some of that it's almost like a little bit of a release in a way it's kind of nice mm -hmm. you know yeah, kind of that time like that time off like we were just talking about you know taking that time to invest in your business you know if someone has a cancellation or a reschedule on you well take some of that time to also invest in yourself because you are your business as well mm -hmm. reach out to some other people treat that as investment into your business you know, a little rest, relaxation, a little camaraderie, you know, just something small. I mean, it does a lot for your mental health. That's something that gets neglected a lot, I think, when it comes to this. And people don't talk about. And oh, it can yeah. be very challenging. Yeah, I had a guy message me um, a couple of days ago. And it like, really got me thinking about something I really don't think a lot about is that mental health part of it. It's like, like, you know, we're always doing podcast episodes on, um, you know, ways to get bigger, ways to grow. But it's like, mm. that is so like going, growing fast is, is almost bad for your brain as well. Cause you're always on the answer. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, I'm laughing because that's what I feel like I've kind of gone through a little bit. I literally feel like it's been like a shotgun. It just kaboom. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> here we go. Here I am. Holy crap. You know, hyperspeed, you know, stars flying past me. My eyes are rolling back and I'm going, Holy crap. I didn't expect this. Yeah. You know, I, cause everything I was hearing, I, I felt like I was going to be going through more of a grind in the beginning mm -hmm. and it was not like that. And it was like rocket fuel and it was like, holy crap, too much, too fast, but here I am, let's go. And it's yeah. been, and that's been challenging on the brain too, to try and deal with all of that, try and be a person, try mm -hmm. and find time for yourself. And then, you know, other extenuating things on top of that. It's just like, that's definitely something people don't talk about a lot. 
Yeah. Something I went through, I was like you to where I actually was slow within like the first year. It wasn't doing things right. My brand was, it was pretty bad. I've talked about it before. Just really didn't know what I was doing in the beginning, but like year two, I rebranded really put time into like what it took. I really put in the work and we shot up and like grew extremely fast. And it's like what everybody wants when they're not there. It's like that one thing it's like, you know, you think you want that fast growth, but like really steady growth is healthier. Um, yeah. And, and it wore on me super bad. Like we went to a shop next year, we went to a bigger shop and, you know, took on more overhead, which, which was fine, but it's that stress of knowing like you do have that there. Like, even if you're making four times what your overhead is, but like, you're still, you're still worried about like, what's there, how, you know, I've never been in, you know, because here's how growth goes is like you shoot up and you're going to have, you're going to, it's just like the stock market or the housing market. Like it goes up, it corrects. And then it, you know, you, if you look at a chart, it's, you're going to grow and it's going to go up, but there's going to be a time to where like, if you grow fast, when that slower month comes or that, that, that slower time comes, it's like, you're not used to it because you you just had ups, 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 up and up. You didn't, or let's say you have employees quit and then like that hits you or, you know, equipment failure, like all these things, when it hits you, it hits hard because you never experienced it yet. So it's like fast growth sometimes can be so taxing on your brain. And like, I went through a, a spurt to where, um, like I lost like 25, 30 pounds. I was have, we had a bunch of like contract work, like where, um, some like newer vehicle dealerships, like we would, we would go in contracts with them and having that worry of when your business half over half of your income from is from businesses like that, you constantly worry about like, what if they drop out? Like, what if, you know, they find something cheaper when that's up, you know, when we're, when we're done, are they going to renew with us? You know? So it's like, you constantly are scared or, or, I guess that was in my case. No, no, I very much understand that. I have, that is something I deal with constantly and I don't know how to turn it off or get rid of the monkey that's on my back. <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of them because I always am in fear that the calls are going to stop. Mm -hmm. I literally am always looking around the corner looking for the boogeyman. <laughs> I'm always doing it. I'm checking. I'm always checking my flanks. I'm always watching. Always yeah. trying to just be aware because I always think those calls are going to stop. I feel like if I'm not doing this, if I don't do this, if I don't do this, if I don't get out there, if I don't make that post, if I don't make that follow up, if I don't return that phone call, if I don't answer that phone when that phone rings, you know, it's all going to stop. But oh, I'm yeah. constant. It doesn't matter how good I'm doing. It doesn't matter how successful I feel at the moment. It, I mean, my door could be getting beat down and I could be trying to plug my ears, but I'm still, there's just that thing that nags away. Like, what if it all stops? Mm -hmm. You got to grind, go harder, go mm -hmm. harder, more posts, get out there more, do another giveaway, go do this, go do that. It yeah. just don't, I don't know how to turn that off. Yeah. That that's, that was the part that was like, I, I literally had to, I came home to my wife and I'm like, I've got to pivot so hard on like, what like we scaled way down to the point to where like just so that I could get a healthier state of mind honestly it was to that point of like I was like you constant worry of like what is what if it all goes away you know what if what if majority of my great clients go to somebody else what if they didn't enjoy that one experience even though we've detailed their vehicles the past 10 times but what if on the 11th they didn't enjoy it and they go to somebody else or what about the new guy who just started up like, oh man, his branding's pretty decent. Is like, he going to take over, you know, my area or, you know, it's like that constant worry is what was what I lost that unhealthy weight from. And that, that just, my brain was literally, that's probably the most depressed I've ever been in my life. Honestly, was just trying to grow something, being scared that it would either get taken or, or, um, it would all go away. And it's, it's extremely unhealthy. You know, it's like something that oh, I did yeah. was I had to, I had to go back and be way more structured. I had to shut off. Like, you know, if, if I had, uh, I had a dealership there, they were like, Hey, we have five vehicles coming to you. I need them done in two days. And they were all getting corrections and they were all getting like the works, mm. you know? And, um, but they would give me such a harsh deadline when realistically I should have been like, no, that's not feasible. You know, 
these vehicles t- are, are going to take more time because for one, the condition of them or for two, it's just not possible in general, but I would make sure that it was possible. And I would work till two in the morning, you know, to make sure that those were done. And it's just, there's got to be some type of give when it comes to like work life balance, I think. And that, and, and it's hard to say that because like, I remember what my life balance was and you no, know, like if it was the weekend and I was supposed to be spending time with like family, my brain was not there. I wasn't in it. I was yeah. sitting there. I was, even when I wasn't at work, I was still thinking about work and like, it was just a really, really unhealthy time. And, and I think a lot of people go through those, those, um, areas like their brain goes through that in spurts or in sessions i guess yeah especially my saving grace system. yeah me my saving grace for the most part has been um like i, I alluded to i do i like martial arts is uh mm-hmm. brazilian jiu-jitsu because i got a gym um here locally that i go to and it's just a great community of people where i can go and kind of turn that detailing part of my brain off and just go try and strangle some other humans <laughs> and get strangled in the process you know it's yeah. It's very cathartic. Once once that's all over, I just I, it's like going to it's just my Zen place, mm-hmm. and it's it's the only reprieve I really have because for me, you know, there's not really the family thing. Isn't I don't have the family thing. Mm-hmm. I'm in like I moved here knowing like nobody, so mm-hmm. I don't really have a lot when it comes to you know all that other stuff. So for me, I'm always thinking about work. Mm-hmm. I'm always thinking about detailing. I'm all I think about. So if I, if I don't have anything else, it's, it can be problematic and I should probably still continue to work on that. Mm-hmm. But jujitsu right now has been that outlet. You're good. Yeah, dude, it's literally, that was it with me. Like it wasn't, um, it wasn't MMA, but it was like, I got into, got into like basketball heavily and it just like having that something that's like, mm-hmm. You know, there's things that like your brain will partially shut off. Like you could go to a movie and like, obviously you're watching a movie, but you could also like have the other half still thinking, you know, but playing some type of sport and it it doesn't necessarily have to be a sport. It just could be like some type of social, um, something you need that one thing that completely gets your brain to shut off of going from this. Exactly. You know, it's like, that for me was the biggest thing. Like when I go play basketball, it's for one, cause I like playing it, but for two, it's to just have that release to put myself from this spot to this spot and just be completely yeah. okay with it. You know, it usually does it falls into something usually physical like sports or, you know, something like that. It just, cause it really helps you just kind of lock in. I mean, you're forced to, cause if you don't, I mean, it's all over in one way or another. I mean, why are you doing it? You know, yeah. in my case, it's, you know, if I'm thinking about detailing, well, this guy's going to get my back and strangle me out. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be tapping really soon or I'm going to be going unconscious. Yeah. You know, in your case, it's, you know, you better move. You better shoot that ball. I mean, you better do something yeah. quick. You got to you got to be on it. And it. Really. I mean, that stuff's really helpful. Mm-hmm. And I'm still trying to work on that balance. I should be adding more things into my life still. But mm-hmm. it's just so hard to pull yourself away from just focusing on that business and even with that little itch in the back of the skull that says if you don't do this then it all goes away I know. just like you were talking about you were dealing with yeah it, it's it, actually it, nice yeah. to hear someone else like deal with that portion of it that type of struggle because it's like for me i've i've had that wonder i've actually thought to myself i'm like Dude, how many other detailers deal with this because no. i got my buddy in north carolina um Ken Golden, um, he's like, um, I'll ask him about it. And he'll be like, dude, I wish I could help you, man, but I don't like that. I don't worry like that. It's not, he's just like, cool as a cucumber. And I'm like, man, there's something yeah. wrong with you. It's, pers- <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's personality. Right. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it all comes down to personality. Like there, there's so many people that I've met. It's like, they're kosher, man. They're just like, they're good with the way that yep. they've done it. They never even hit like rough patches when it comes to like mental exhaustion. And I'm thinking I'm like in the midst of me just at the time, just absolutely have a mental breakdown. Like, you know, it, <laughs> it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. so this, this isn't normal then, you know, but it is completely yeah. normal. That feeling is like, whether it be because you grew too fast or whether it be, you know, you have employees quit or whether it be, you don't have business at all. Like that is all the same feeling. It's all the same. Like 
unhealthy mental exhaustion and you think like I have to just work harder and harder and harder and harder and your speed just picks up because you think that's what it requires. But in all reality, I think it comes down to like that monkey in your brain, as you were saying, like, like that monkey on your back is almost like a false. Um, it's almost like a false thing because like you think if like, you don't answer that, that, res that reply or answer that comment or, um, get back with that person or follow up and do all the things right. Then you think it'll all go away tomorrow, but in all reality, like it takes multiple jabs at your business for, before it just absolutely fails. But you're, you're that little monkey on your back is telling you otherwise. And it's kind of like, yeah, you really got to take your hands off the wheel in reality. And that's the thing yeah. that, you know, you mm -hmm. really got to neglect it. And because you'll push so much harder after like, but yeah, man, I think it's, I think it comes down to like, something that like if you were grinding something I noticed when I was working like those 14 hour days and just like thought I was being ultra productive because I'm putting in the work the thing is is you do have to put in the work too though like it, it like comes down to like if someone's listening to this and they're like oh true I shouldn't work as hard because it's healthier <laughs> <laughs> you know you do still have to grind especially new business like if you're a brand new business just know that it mm -hmm. takes way more work up front then you can kind of coast on your achievements later on. But like, it, it does take that work up front. And but you have to like, know, I guess, when to separate because like, if you can, if you can, if you can say, okay, I get off at this time, and I, I'm off, like, you know, I'm done. My business picks back up at seven tomorrow, you know, when you can shut off like that, I think you work a lot harder within the time frame. Cause I notice, like if I grind for 14 hours, am I really actually doing the things that like I need to be doing with those within those 14 hours or am I just kind of jabbing a little bit at them, you know, but I notice mm -hmm. when I separate, I'm like, okay, I know when I'm off at this time, I know I need to grind on that one thing within those working hours and I get way more done. Uh, you're forcing yourself not to have the ability to procrastinate. Well, dude, we'll go ahead and um, we'll end it off here. This was a good a, a good episode. Um, tell yeah. tell everybody how they can find you or where you want them to go to, and um, I guess leave them off with that. Um, yeah, um, you can find me on my uh, Facebook. It's a uh, Duck Detail. It's at, at Duck Auto Detail on Instagram and Facebook, and you know, just Joe Woolard on Facebook. That's me. You can pretty much find me anywhere. Awesome, dude. Joe's good. Detail.com. So, whatever. Awesome. Dude, it was good having you on, man. Yeah, man. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Absolutely. Yep. So, that is it for this episode of the Detail Spot Podcast. I hope you enjoyed uh, me and Joe hanging out. I hope you enjoyed that episode. And uh, hopefully, something resonated with you. Hopefully, something um, was relatable in some type of way so that you can implement or you know use what was said in this episode in your own detailing business. So, hopefully, you enjoyed it overall. I know I did. It was a lot of fun hanging out with Joe. We kind of vibed out super cool dude and i enjoyed having him on and if you did get something from the episode or you are enjoying the content that is coming from this channel if you could leave us a review on either apple Podcasts or spotify it's going to greatly help the channel grow so that we can reach more people um, and so that those detailers can get something from the episode as well i appreciate all of you guys and i'll catch you on the next episode of the detail spot podcast